Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. But we'll get into that later. <laughs> I'm pumped up and ready to go this morning and I want to talk about Prince Albert in a can. Here he is. Of course, it's, I'm in mirror, so it's reversed. <laughs> I bought this on eBay. I think it was $7. It's a real can. No tobacco in it. Prince Albert's gone. <laughs> so why am I talking about Prince Albert again? Well, my teacher, and I'll say this, um, you know, I've, you know, I've been studying yoga, Buddhism, uh, Sufism, Christian mysticism, psychology, Young, Freud, uh, mythology through Joseph Campbell, uh, my whole life. I mean, and that's I'm, I'm 86. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of study, and it really began um, when I got out of high school. Um, I remember, uh, you know, as a senior, uh, people, hey, well, what do you believe? What's your religion and all that? And I remember saying, I was either atheist or agnostic. I, said, I think agnostic. I said I didn't know. But that that leaves the question open, you know, uh, whether if you're an atheist or an agnostic, uh, that means you got to find out. And uh, so my life really has been finding out, <laughs> and not just not just accepting uh, what's given, you know, and just say, okay, I'll accept, I'll I'll believe that, and. Um, just as a side, I even tried to become a, a Presbyterian minister back in 1970, and um, I even got accepted by the Richmond Theological Seminary. I was a lone wolf. I didn't have any rec I didn't have any church or anything. I just, I just had a big samadhi experience and wanted to, wanted to preach Jesus. I guess I preach awakening, uh, and so uh, I got in there and. Uh, it, it, I got in there <laughs> over the Christmas holidays. I kind of like sneaked in, you know, and and then uh, then the admissions board uh, met, you know, after they were, well, who is this guy? And I don't know who let me in. But anyway, they reviewed it and uh, rejected it. So I was accepted and rejected. But anyway, before I got rejected, the point was, I remember, and this just sticks out in my mind so clear, I was I, I had been assigned an apartment. Even had my wife and baby up there, and we got an apartment. And uh, but I was totally dependent upon the seminary. I had no money. So anyway, I had an apartment. I was already assigned a Hebrew class, and uh, I was so excited and and uh, sitting in the cafeteria, and I was listening to some seminary students over there, and uh, this was Presbyterian seminary. And, and they were talking about, uh, well, I, I can accept this doctrine, but I can't accept that. So they were going through the Presbyterian doctrines that they could accept and reject, you know. So they were finding a compromise, kind of like the Republicans trying to elect the Speaker, you know. And then this song came on by the Edwin Hawkins singers, and it was fresh then, and it was... Uh, uh, oh shit! <laughs> Walking with Jesus, I think, <laughs> and it was such a joyous, just a, a joyous when Jesus walks. Oh God! And then the administrator came in and tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Come here, I got to talk." Put his arm around me and said, "You've been rejected." And I cried. Oh God! It was like God had rejected me. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me because it steered me out of the institution into the path of yoga and Buddhism. And I finally end up where I am now with Prince Albert in a can. <laughs> so I want to, you know, so I know you think, what, well, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but there's nothing like a good metaphor, you know. An, an ironic joke, you know. So, so basically, this is you know, this is like, well, who's Prince Albert, <laughs> and why is he in a can? I don't, I don't see him in there. <laughs> 
But Prince Albert Lowe is is finally the 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 Zen teacher, and I won't even call him a Zen teacher. I'll just call him a teacher. Finally, opened up my can. <laughs> finally, let Prince Albert out. Finally, let me out of the can. You know, of of. Uh, Container. The can is a container, uh, like seminary. The Christian, the Presbyterian was a container. It was a can, and they rejected me, so I left out. My favorite metaphor uh, in all commercials, a metaphor. My favorite commercial that's always been like a metaphor of my life was the Charlie the Tuna. Charlie the Tuna wanted to go to the tuna factory, and he was always being rejected. Sorry, Charlie. Sorry, Charlie. You can't go to the tuna factory. Of course, that's the irony. <laughs> if you go to the tuna factory, you're you're dead. <laughs> so, so anyway, you can see I'm a little pumped up this morning, but uh, and there's no reason for it. But anyway, Albert Lowe. I discovered Albert Lowe. When a friend of mine, because if you want to chain events, you see, the chain of events was, uh, by the way, Albert Lowe, he just passed, I think, in, 19, in uh, uh, 2016 or something, four or five years ago. He was a uh, uh, Zen teacher, I would call him a master, at the Montreal Zen Center for about 20 some years. And he was uh, was received got his awakening and authority, but in the Rochester Zen Center, which was created by Al, by uh, Philip Kaplow, who wrote the seven pillars, the three pillars of Zen, a big big exponent of Renzai Zen, and brought Zen to America. And Yusana Roshi, uh, Yusatani Roshi, which is a Zen master who taught there and, and taught in America. So, um, so he's an authentic uh, uh, teacher. Uh, he didn't just get up and do it. He was, he was given, uh, told to do it, you know, to open a Zen center in Montreal. Anyway, so I've been, I, I came upon Albert Lowe. And you can come upon him too by just going to the Montreal Zen Center, where all of his books are. He's, he wrote he so for twenty some years he wrote books, and uh, gave talks, tea shows. So they're all there. Uh, tea shows are a Dharma talk given during a session, and they're and they are meant to awaken. They're not information. They're not something to learn about, but they are they are punches to awaken shock you into a oh, whoa, wake up, you know, because during the session, uh, your mind is very clear and clean. It's ready for a commercial message. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Albert Lowe uh, was discovered by me because a friend of mine went to China and, during, and uh, ended up uh, at a uh, Buddhist monastery called Shangri-La. On the side of a mountain, and she, she uh, uh, went to the, uh, when she went to the outhouse. Well, she found buried in the dirt behind the outhouse a little blood jade, a little blood jade with what I thought was a Buddha in there. But it's I discovered it was Quan Yin, and Quan Yin is the Chinese version of the Bodhisattva of compassion, uh, or the Bodhisattva of Volokiteshvara, who. Was was part of would goes back through Indian mythology all the way back to Shiva, so the Bodhis there's there's uh, two Bodhisattvas, a uh, three two that are important three of them but the two that are primary is 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 a uh, 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 Swara, which is the Bodhisattva of compassion, and Manjushri who is the Bodhisattva of wisdom. So you have these two wings, compassion and wisdom, represented by, personified by, uh, the Bodhisattva uh, uh, of, of Avalokiteshvara and Manjushri, and uh, when when they in, when when um, the Bodhisattva compassion moved to China, the Chinese are very simple, pragmatic thinkers, and they didn't like all these Hindu. Gods with thousands of arms and all that. So they so they made uh, the Bodhisattva compassion Kuan Yin, or in Japan Konan, 
which is really the equivalent to the Virgin Mary, uh, the Bodhisattva of compassion or the heart of compassion. So I was given that. And um, so I wanted to know, well, who is this Kuan Yin? So then I found a, a book. I found out that uh, uh, Albert Lowe had, had written about uh, the Bodhisattva of Compassion in the Heart Sutra. So I discovered the Heart Sutra, sung by Aimee Omi, mm, Oi, Aimee Oi, <coughs> on YouTube. And uh, when I, the first time I uh, listened to that, my heart chakra opened up. My, it was like a, it was like my heart was an accordion, literally an accordion of joy and sorrow, squeezing, squeezing, crying. I was crying. Oh, stop! Oh, don't stop! Stop! Don't stop! Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And so then I said, "What in the hell's going on here?" So I wanted to find out what this heart sutra was, and I found the book by Albert Lowe on what am I, the heart sutra. So he. So that introduced me, and from that I discovered creating consciousness. And that's where, you know, and so that really led me into the works of Albert Lowe and uh, Prince Albert in a can. Because he opened up my can. He opened up my can. So a lot of the, my talks and my writing basically are opening up the can. And when you look in the can, there's nothing in it. <laughs> so, so it's a creative opening up. You open up the can is letting the, the tension out. And the tension comes out in creativity. It, it comes out in, in life, you know. So, so the Prince Albert and the can, it's kind of like a, uh, my uh, metaphor for this talk. And, uh, and I really just, um, confessing or admitting, you know, that, that I finally have, after all these years, a teacher who opens up my can, you know, uh, a teacher who literally opened up the can of my practice, you know, because when something's in a can, there's, there's, you're contained, there's, this is not it, you know, it's like, you may expand the can, or you may get other cans that are bigger, but you're still in a container. You're still canned up, you see. And you can kick the can down the road, which is what our history would be, kicking a can to whatever can you're in, you kick it down the road, which is called time. So you're always kicking your can down the road. And if you feel like it's, you're contained in the can, if you feel like that there's more, well, you may get a bigger can. You may go to a a different teacher. You may go to a different yoga, a different, a different, uh, bigger can, a different label even. You might, one can has got Buddha on it, and one can has got Zen on it, or maybe you go to, uh, Sufism, or maybe Kashmir Shaivism, or maybe you just go out to the stick with Carl Jung, or whatever the can is, you see. It's still a container. It's got a label on it, you know. It's, it's not free. So how do you get Prince Albert in a can is a metaphor for me of opening the can. So the can is constantly opening. So you're constantly discovering. You're constantly getting a wider angle. You're constantly, you're awakening to reality instead of trying to can it, you see. Okay, well, I had a different topic in mind here, but I'm going to stay with that. <laughs> and just let that metaphor stick with you. You know, Prince Albert, how do you open up your can? How do you let Prince Albert out of the can? You are Prince Albert. You know, you are a prince. You are a princess. How do you get out of the can? You should ask. You should look at, look at that. You know, how do you get out of this can of consciousness that is labeled and sealed in a can, you see. So when I tried to become, when I wanted to become a minister, I thought it was, you know, it was, a, I discovered, fortunately, they kicked me out. Fortunately, it was a can. <laughs> and even yoga was a can. Then I went into yoga. Guru yoga was a can. Buddhism is a can. And even Zen is a can. So Prince Albert in a can even removes the can of Zen. 
So I'm not preaching Zen. I'm, re I'm what I'm opening up, which is my own life. You see, is that your freedom is not in the can, and it's not out of the can. Your freedom is the opening of the can. The disc, the opening. <gasps> I'm out of the can. That's it right there. You're not into some other can. You're not getting from one can to another. You're not going from a smaller to a bigger, or a bigger to a smaller, or a different label. You are just the opening, the aha, the oh, the verb, the act, the action. You're not the noun. The noun is the can. Can is made by language. So when you're free from language, when you're free from words, but you still need the words, but you're not using, you're not trapped in a can of worms. You're not trapped in a can of wor words. Now, you want to say worms, words, same thing. <laughs> you see, so so the, the, what I'm trying to portray here and point to is that it's not the can, but it's the opening of the can that is true self. That's why Zen says true self is no self. Well, no self is the can. And true self is not another can or a bigger can. It's the opening of no can. It's the action. Of no, it's the discovery. It's the aha. It's the satori or kensho or eureka or I see. I see for the first time. Oh Lord, I see. That is Prince Albert in a can. Thanks for dropping in. See you tomorrow. <laughs>